This is the story of another occupied house or squat in central Dublin at Gardner Place, uh, just off Monument Square. We first saw it a couple of weeks back and we called back the following day to find out what the story was. You'll find abandoned buildings like this all over the city that are normally easy enough to spot because they've been boarded up. Because this one had been occupied, the inhabitants had already removed some of the uh, shuttering from the windows so there's daylight. The place was nicknamed the Firehouse Squat, and that's because a couple of years previously there'd been a fire that had uh, gutted one of the rooms on the ground floor and done smoke damage to almost the entire ground floor. As you went up through the house though, the conditions approved and it turned out to be relatively habitable. However, the ground floor and indeed the entire house had been left abandoned for quite some considerable amount of time, as far as we were able to tell since the previous tenants of it had been evicted by the landlord. The problem with that though is it turned out there was still a High Court injunction in place uh, that had enabled their eviction and so no sooner had the current occupants moved into the firehouse than they too were served with an eviction order. They then contacted Solidarity Times asking us if we perhaps could do some video coverage of this new house that was occupied and tell the backstory in the expectation that uh, the eviction that was coming up could be resisted. In actual fact, what happened was the following Friday, uh, before nine o'clock in the morning, a very large squad of riot police turned up and using a kind of Roman tortoise shield type formation, smashed their way through the doors, uh, charged into the house, grabbed the occupants and dragged them down to the High Court, uh, where they had to then uh, pledge to actually leave the premises. So the, this firehouse squat is once more an abandoned house. A familiar Dublin pattern where evictions simply generate homelessness. As anyone who has been following Solidarity Times over the last month will know, uh, this is a typical story of the struggle that's been going on in central Dublin, particularly north central Dublin, where there's a huge number of abandoned buildings and where people have occupied those buildings in order to convert them once more into homes. Many of these occupations have been met with eviction. Some of these evictions have been illegal and violent involving heavies. Some of these have followed court proceedings and a couple have followed injunctions. The best known of them, of course, being the eviction of the Grange Gorman complex about four months back. It's significant that if you go down to that complex today, you'll see it's still lying more or less abandoned. In fact, at least some of the people in, the, in this particular occupation would have also been involved in those previous occupations. And they've had the experience over the last few months of being evicted from one home they've made after the other. Also that these buildings can be turned back into speculation pieces for Irish capitalism. It's no exaggeration to say that what's happening with these sort of places is they're just like pieces that are being returned to a, a monopoly board so that people who've already got a vast amount of money can trade those pieces with each other to become even richer. Meanwhile, the housing crisis in Dublin escalates and people, like the people who lived here and were doing something to create their own homes, are targeted by both private capital and the state. This sort of property speculation, which involves long periods of deliberate dereliction, also causes problems for the communities where these buildings are. Uh, kids, for instance, will often get into these abandoned houses and sites and they're quite dangerous. Or what happens in this place happens, where, which is heroin addicts end up using the shooting galleries. And in this case, they were simply tossing their needles out the window onto that roof below. Not that the speculators could give a damn. They don't live here. They live miles out of the city or in posh suburbs like Dorky and Fox Rock. At the start of the summer, it was revealed there were something like 300,000 empty homes in Ireland. A lot of people assumed that a large proportion of that number must be ghost estates. Housing estates built at the height of the boom, hours from the major cities, that nobody actually really wants to live in anymore. The coverage of evictions we've done in the last four months over here on Solidarity Times, however, suggests a very different story. We've now covered about half a dozen that have all happened within about the half kilometre between Fibsborough and the city centre. But we are also aware of a few other occupied buildings in that same sort of general area, in some cases where people have been living in them for as long as two years. 
and in addition, just walking around the streets and indeed talking to the people organising these occupations, it's clear there were many, many more buildings in this area alone. So at the same time that Ireland in general, and Dublin in particular, is seeing a housing crisis of massive proportions, probably the biggest the state has ever faced, we're seeing a situation in which there are empty buildings to be found everywhere. But as soon as anybody moves in to occupy them, then the courts issue orders for them to be evicted and the guards move in to carry out the dirty work. This is all business as usual. The Fianna Fáil tent at the Galway races was infamous for the entertainment of property developers who financed Fianna Fáil. But Fianna Gael and Labour in government have proven to be no different than this. And also, of course, it's not entirely coincidental that the 2014 Register of Dáil Interests discovered that almost one third of TDs are also landlords. Let's return for a last look at the now evicted firehouse squat. Um, one thing of interest is that the inhabitants were not simply humans, but there were pets there as well. These two guys hopefully will have found a new home by now. This two fix list will probably never have been completed before the eviction happened. Reporting for Solidarity Times, give us a follow on Facebook.